Fleeing bombs and death, Karabakh Armenians recount a visceral fear and hunger. The number of people moving into Armenia could reach 120,000. The report is more. Ethnic Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh began a mass exodus by car on September 24th toward Armenia after Azerbaijan defeated the breakaway region's fighters in a conflict dating from the Soviet era. Petya Grigorian is one of the first ethnic Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh to make it to Armenia after a lightning 24-hour Azerbaijani military operation defeated the Karabakh Armenian forces. A lot of people out of 500 residents, only 40 managed to get out. Everyone else stayed. They are at the airport and in the city, in different places, and they are waiting to be evacuated. They were bombing us hard. First, they were bombing for several hours. Then they have started the offensive. Children ran into school. They bombed the school from a mortar gun. Our children were injured there. We were hiding in basements and waiting until the peacekeepers came and let all the people out. Of course, the prisoners of war remained there. As far as we know, the elderly who couldn't leave, it was already dark night, and people panicked, naturally. Those with fuel had started to drive down the Lachin corridor toward the border with Armenia. The Armenians of Karabakh, a territory internationally recognized as a part of Azerbaijan but previously beyond its control, were forced into a ceasefire last week after a 24-hour military operation by the much larger Azerbaijani military. Armenia and Azerbaijan have fought two wars over the enclave in 30 years, with Azerbaijan gaining back swathes of territory in and around Nagorno-Karabakh in a six-week conflict in 2020. The counter-terror measures taken by Azerbaijan achieved the set goals. Armenia and its subordinate illegal regime were forced to agree to disarm, disband all illegal structures and withdraw from Azerbaijan. The reason why it did not happen peacefully lies in brazen disregard by Armenia and lack of adequate action by involved third-party facilitators. Excellencies, as counter-terror measures halted, Azerbaijan has now embarked on practical implementation of disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration efforts on the ground. The Nagorno-Karabakh leadership told that the region's 120,000 Armenians did not want to leave as a part of Azerbaijan for fear of persecution and ethnic cleansing. The 120,000 people whose sole aspiration is to live and create in peace and dignity in their ancestral homeland and who have already been suffering under the nine-month blockade uh, and siege by Azerbaijan were subjected to military attack by tens of thousands of troops. In the course of this inhumane attack, the whole territory of Nagorno-Karabakh, Stepanakert, and other towns and settlements came under intense and indiscriminate shelling with heavy weaponry, such as rockets, artillery, combat UAVs, aviation, including prohibited cluster munitions. Erdogan last week said he supported the aims of Azerbaijan's latest military operation, but played no part in it. The Armenians are not accepting Azerbaijan's promise to guarantee their rights as the region is integrated. David Babian, president of the self-styled Republic of Arsak, told that 99.9% preferred to leave the historic lands. The situation in Karabakh was tough. People were hungry and leaving with no electricity or fuel. The situation could change the delicate balance of power in the South Caucasus region. A patchwork of ethnicities crisscrossed with oil and gas pipelines where Russia, the United States, Turkey and Iran vie for influence.